All right. Good afternoon, SPOA Governing Board, Executive Board, and members. Um, so thank you for taking the time out of y'all's busy schedules to be here today um, and just have some discussion about SPOA and who SPOA is. You know, when SPOA got started, uh, there was a lot of misinformation about SPOA. Uh, today, we want to just kind of tell everybody who SPOA is and be very transparent about that. Um, we want to take uh, and make every school photography company, every lab, every yearbook provider, um, every software provider, every camera manufacturer, anybody that, that supports this great rich tradition of school pictures and yearbooks and make sure they understand why it's necessary to have a trade association in the, the awesome opportunities that it's providing to so many companies uh, and, and so many good resources for all of us uh, to be better and to increase our participation in everything that we do in the school photography and yearbook industry. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. Uh, first, my name is David Crandall. Um, I am the executive director for School Photographers of America. I started off uh, 28 years ago uh, in this industry and, and worked for a company called Life Touch. Uh, and grew up from a photographer all the way to uh, a territory manager and then into corporate uh, as a director at one point. And, and then I moved over to Strawbridge Studios. And two years ago, I started working to help form School of Photographers of America. And that's what I do today. I only work uh, for, I work for all these people and, and take their initiatives and try to put them into action so that uh, our goal is to make school photography and yearbooks a rich tradition for years to come. So with that, all that being said, I want to turn it over to our members and our board members and just ask a few questions about SPOA, um, because all of you have given your time, your talent, and your treasure and in, in to make this possible. And so that's huge in a world that we live in in COVID. And who would have thought that a trade association could be founded and started during such horrible times that our industry went through at the beginning of COVID. So uh, with that, founders, anybody can speak up at any time. You know, my first question is, you know, the last two years have been insanely tough for everybody. Um, service providers, your company, schools, you name it. Um, you know, why did you make the investment of your time and, and some of you, your talent and treasure to help believe in School of Photographers of America and having a trade association. So anybody, take it away. Well, I got it. I got involved because uh, especially during the pandemic, I felt, uh, I think a lot of us felt alone. You know, we were trying to fight battles and, and figure out what to do by ourselves. So for us, it was a great opportunity to get together with other uh, people that were in the same situation. Um, so I look forward to, uh, seeing what other what everybody else was going to do and, and hopefully get a concerted effort to make some changes that would help uh, anybody in the industry. Yeah, as, as Tom as Tom said, um, I'm, I'm proud to be part of SPOA. And, and as Tom said, I, I felt a little bit alone too, you know, as an owner, sometimes you feel like you're on an island all by yourself. Um, but I felt like during this difficult time that the SPO was like a rescue boat that had my back. Um, the amount of uh, work that David and other members uh, put into creating the digital guidelines and standards, uh, it's going to benefit all school picture companies, um, large and small. And I want to be involved with um, a group that likes SPOA that has my back. So very happy, very excited. Yeah, I'm, go I'm gonna reiterate what Tom and Mike just said. Uh, during this pandemic time, it was, it was fabulous to have uh, the support of all of these folks here, uh, all of us wanting to help with the tradition of school photos and try to find the answers because we are in uncharted waters and how nice to to put aside any differences and to do what's best for the for the overall industry. And that's been so refreshing and so helpful in so many ways. And, and for David to step up and be the director and, and uh, Claudia be the chairman now and all of these people to, to do everything they could to help us. It's been 
it's been really great and, and we're hoping to bring in more people so they can also feel the way we feel now. I think that um, something that was very attractive in the very beginning of SPOA was uh, talking to many of you and David discussing why the school picture industry is so essential. Um, and there was, uh, you know, it was kind of scary for a while that we weren't going to be able to get into schools. And that was what was so attractive right off the bat. And then things just kept on um, moving forward. What other uh, topics can we talk about to make sure that our industry stays strong um, by educating um, other vendors, educating our schools, educating administrators, um, as well as people in our industry. So. Everybody shared, uh, you know, a, a lot of the positive things, and, and I'll add to it with saying, you know, advocacy. I think that's a word that um, everybody's alluded to here. But um, David and, and board members, as you know, we worked on. Uh, if you remember the term essential services uh, back when COVID was kind of starting to slow down and, and how essential is having a photography session at a school so there's safety and there's identification of those students. And we all know how everybody in this industry, anybody watching this who's associated knows how important ID cards are and, and administrative CDs and files for those schools. Um, that's what SPO is about. That's what's leading us into that next generation. And if you also think about governance, there's nobody who's governing what any photography company should be doing at all. Um, from again, from those uh, from safety and security standpoint to um, how uh, personnel from an outside vendor um, is working in a school with minors. Um, those are things that our industry desperately needs and there isn't out there. And we all know the barriers to entry are very low right now. And, and that's, that can be a good thing, but I'll, it can also be a catch 22. And so SPO is, one of SPO's goal is that governance to make sure, hey, yearbook CDs, yearbook exports are done the right way. And all these things are done in a way that behooves the client, behooves the, the vendor, the company who's doing it, and just leads to a level playing field that everybody can, can work with. So that's for us, one of the things um, that we really like and that we are excited about how far we've gotten and, and we've got a long way to go, but um, we're on the right track as we move forward. Well, Chip, back in the very beginning, I got very involved <clears throat> with the yearbook guidelines, and um, it was back at the very beginning, and uh, we made some significant changes throughout the years, but even within the last year, we've been able to take in to bring together a coalition of uh, school photographers, yearbook uh, providers, and take it in to establish some great uh, deadlines where it is beneficial for everybody that's involved. And at the same time, we are right now working on the administrative software and hopefully within a week or so, we will have those uh, tied down where um, instead of having 50 different exports to take and to make, we will have a single export that will be used for all of the administrative software, all of the administrative software. So I really feel like that David has done a tremendous job in taking and pulling this together along with David Lake there at Interstate. So um, I'm really proud to be a part of this organization. Awesome. Um, other board members, you know, we're working, you all are working on a lot of fronts. Um, we talked about the, um, you know, the, the software uh, that's really done and baked. It, it was a lot of uh, last five months have been a lot of attorneys from the software providers and ours as well. Uh, not easy uh, to, you would think it'd be simple. It's not as simple to do something as a standard for a, uh, um, an industry of uh, the way our, our governance works and, and um, antitrust laws and all those type things. But we're working on so many fronts. What are some fronts that you're passionate about that you've seen us work on that you're also excited about what we're going to be working on? Anyone? I, I go back to the yearbook guidelines and the administrative software. I, I, that's very important. Uh, back in my early days, and it goes back 30, 40 years, um, when they first started talking about your book 
CDs, I had to learn out what that was going to be. You, you know, they were scanning film at that time to take and to produce the yearbook CD. So there's been a lot of transition, a lot of changes that have been made over the years. And I've been a, very glad to be a part of that. I, I'm, I'm gonna second what Bill just said. Uh, for me, having those industry standard guidelines is the key thing. Um, it's so that, uh, you know, it's, it's the equivalent of, uh, of VHS and beta back in the day of, of video. Right. Um, when, when you establish a, 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 a common language to which we can all perform, I'll know that when I deliver my yearbook CD or if I am have a software issue, if I uh, do it to those specs, I'll be doing to the industry standard and I'll, I'll be safe in that regard to know that I can service the schools that, that want to have our product. And I think what you just brought up, David, um, in, in conjunction with those with those two things is that is a huge thing. And I think that's why we're all sitting here. One of the main reasons we're sitting here right now. But like you just said, I mean, that's not an easy thing to get done. So imagine one person trying to do it as opposed to an entire front of people trying to do it. So, I mean, I think that just goes back to the, the formation and the, the and the strength of this group as a whole, the fact that we can get this conversation going and get in the right direction um, to getting some, you know, specifics down on what and what we need for those two items. Um, that's huge. And I know that's a huge reason I'm here. One of the things that I, I really enjoyed uh, that the group is focusing on is not only the standards of the data, but teaching schools uh, that sharing data is in their interest and sharing data is a good idea. So, you know, many of our schools understand that already, but there's lots of schools that are, are a little bit trepidatious to share student information because of various rules or their interpretations of rules. And one of the things that we're doing at SPOA uh, is showing schools and administrators that they not only are allowed to, but they should share data uh, with all school photographers because it'll allow us to better serve them and that makes our jobs easier as, as, as photographers, it makes schools jobs easier as administrators, um, and it makes kids and families lives better when the data is more accurate. We're all working together and pulling in the same direction. And it really takes a national organization, somebody like SPOA, to speak with one voice uh, to make that case to give administrators and school districts the confidence that they know uh, when they share the data with us that it's gonna be treated uh, by the law, with respect and uh, for the service of the kids and families uh, and it serves us as well. So that's something that's really, really valuable and was greatly missing uh, in our, our industry overall. And just adding on to what Steve just said, the, the, the value of SPOA is that there's many, many, many voices uh, of photographers across the country. So by default, uh, these standards will become industry standards and it's critical that we establish them. Well, David, I might add is, um, you know, we, we've got a great um, network already built up and we had our first conference um, or board meeting um, last uh, in December of 2021. And there's never been a time when um, companies large and small, because that's who we are. We're a, we're a blend here on this on this call together. We're a blend as, as members of SPOA um, when we all could come together. And whether it was big companies or small companies, we were able to talk about things that have impacted our industry that impacted all those companies rather than worrying about sales and uh, accounts and who might be competing against who, because that's not the point where, um, you know, some of us compete, some of us don't, and that doesn't matter. That's all kind of put to the side. We're here for a common goal of preserving the tradition. I mean, it's in our mission. Uh, it's in the mission of SPO that we came up with. We want to preserve the tradition. We want this industry to be healthy. And I think that sometimes, um, even through the creation of the, of the um, association, got a little bit, um, uh, little bit confusing to some people. Who are we, right? Who's our identity? And our identity, as we built it, was always, we always understood, but some people didn't. And I think we're, we're excited to continue to share. We have one goal the whole time, and it's to protect our industry. Um, and as we do that, all these wonderful things are a byproduct of that. And as we've alluded to, and many of you have already said, I mean, we're making some major headway here that 
uh, if we all think back almost 24 months, wasn't even in our windshield to think about. I mean, it was just something that we maybe even dreamed about. So um, just the protecting of our industry is so key and being able to collaborate together. I mean, I think we all on this call, competitors have not have spoken to each other and, and been able to cross those kind of lines that we never had before. And I think that's a, that's a very healthy thing that uh, any company in the industry should have. Yeah, the power of your voices, um, I, I think I shared this with one of the boards, and I know I did with one, can't remember which one, I apologize, but um, when the first time I was speaking to the U.S. Department of Education's director of FERPA, and he was almost comical about, yeah, it's crazy, it's taken y'all this long to get together and have this conversation. Um, and so, you know, it was the same thing, you know, we're because of your voices, it does coming together, made it much easier to get in front of the software companies to get in front of, you know, I think about our, our summer conference coming in June. Uh, I literally was on the phone with, uh, a director with the secret service over, uh, financial crimes, uh, through email hacking, uh, through people's uh, Google and Microsoft 365 accounts where they go in and lock down your servers and stuff. And, uh, you know, they're coming to speak to the conference about how to protect that. And Homeland Security is coming to protect your servers and help make you understand what are the things that are trends that are happening uh, uh, right now with companies across the world, much less the U.S., to ensure that students' images uh, their data is safe and secure because you all are a top priority and essential service to schools through safety initiatives, through ID cards and your images and software. And so your voices are very powerful. What are some other things that you guys uh, might be doing as individual committees or that you're excited about that we can do, have a much larger voice that will preserve our traditions for years to come? David, our team, uh, Ed, Greg, and myself, and we're most excited about the collective work being done around the software standards as, as others have kind of referenced and the data and privacy by way of the Access for Learning platform. Mm -hmm. um, standardizing and modifying the RFP bid process and paperwork is a pretty exciting initiative as well. Mm -hmm. And then certainly the student candid training opportunity. And our feeling is ultimately this just continues to help channel, you know, continue generational interest into and around the industry, which I think is important for all of us. And there are certainly, there's certainly, in, you know, inherent cost savings that each of us will recognize and be a part of for, for years to come. But, um, and above all, I think it helps us to deliver great pictures uh, that'll help create great memories for a lifetime. And, and those are some things that, that we've been most excited about. Awesome. I'll, I'll add on, on to the, uh, to, I think a benefit for one of the things we're adding with the foundation uh, we've been working, uh, you know, talking about promoting and protecting our, our tradition. I think uh, the creation of the foundation that, that we've been working with a number of groups on uh, whether that's cameras for kids or for um, you know, uh, providing packages or yearbooks for students that are displaced or uh, uh, without homes. I think, I think that. I, I don't know a better way to help promote and our, our and protect our tradition of, of what it is that we do. So um, I'm excited about that. I think it's something that with the reach with SPOA, with all of us, then we can reach nationally where, uh, where we couldn't do it uh, individually. I'm going to uh, agree with Eric. Uh, I think that we absolutely have not lost sight that the most important customer that we have are those parents and those children's and what they need and those memories that they so cherish forever and ever. And I think that's what we put at the top of our list, uh, whether it's, you know, software or, or getting these, these uh, standards that we need, but we have never lost sight that the most important thing we're doing is to help parents have the memories forever and ever of those children and to help those kiddos and families that need our help that we can help. So thank you for that. I'd say like myself personally, one of the biggest things that I am part of is the uh, photography and the education. Um, one of the biggest reasons why I joined SPOA uh, really was because of the willingness to share um, and being part of the committee of the photography and education portion. You know, it, it's great because 
being as young as I am, you know, I don't have the knowledge of some of these third and fourth generation photography companies, which is incredible because you can come to an organization like SPOA and you can literally sit down with somebody and have no idea, sit across and be like, oh my God, you're, you're such and such. So, you know, it's, it's a big thing when, you, you know, there's such a willingness to share because, you know, one of the, you know, my father raised me with one of the biggest, uh, you know, words of advice, or, you know, and I guess, you know, literally was success without contribution is failure. And I think SPO is here because all of us here have a certain level of success. And this is the way we contribute back is we give back to the future generations. We give back to everybody and we share this industry so that we can grow it together and strong, but keep the core values of what we started this company for. You know, why did we get into this industry? And it was to create memories that will last a lifetime. Um, and we have to respect that. And I think that's one of the things that we're all here to make sure that at the end of the day, you know, each photo that we take is a memory that that's created with, you know, love, you know, but how do you do this efficiently, safely, um, and to preserve this so the next generation of photographers, you know, cameras for kids, we're training the next generation of photographers. Um, and I think that's going to be one of the great things that the SPO is, you know, we're still young in ways that we're already giving back. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting future for us, you know, and it's, I'm really excited to see it. And you know, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm definitely excited to be a part of SPO and see where this goes and uh, definitely be around for the next few years. Hey, I'm going to jump in and give a, you know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't give a shout out to some of the other people that they're not necessarily on the board, but they're very large partners of our organization. And you think about image quicks and photo links and their willingness and not to just to do their time and talent, but their money to help us. They have the same vision uh, that Eric shared about this foundation and being able to have one cause universally uh, for everyone to provide yearbooks and pictures for displaced kids uh, for when you think of displaced, you, it's, it's, I, uh, it's mind numbing when you hear how many kids are homeless across the U S uh, here in education uh, and then in foster care and never have the opportunity to really have a school picture package to go back and, you know, have a memory of um, and, and to get a yearbook uh, cameras for kids in the, in the same breath to be able to, create that energy so we have future school photographers you know kids that aspire to work for you all um and, and at the same time uh you look at uh sony who's going to be helping is really bought all in on on our organization and is on many fronts and and is helping facilitate national uh trainings for students all across america and every school in america uh, on how to be a better photographer and take uh, pictures and create the future of photographers for our industry and other industries in photography. Uh, and then some, uh, an organization like Photo Merchant that uh, has really gone all in to help us build a survey so we can really listen to mom and understand, you know, what does mom want today? Because many companies, maybe not here, but many companies uh, in this industry uh, for years have just done the same thing the way they've always done it and just because they've always done it that way and you know we live in a world that's radically changed the last two years I think we all know that how we deal with customers how we ship how we communicate uh, and and you know moms want different products and different services at different times and they want to be sold to differently and so the survey will give us needed information globally uh, so everyone can build better products and better services that raise the bar for our industry so that our tradition not only remains, but increases in participation. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to be going to a conference in Houston, uh, June the 9th through 11th at the Weston Galleria. Uh, and our entire focus is on leadership, um, you know, leadership at all levels, at the plant level, uh, at the IT level, uh, at the photography level, at the ownership level, uh, finance, marketing. Um, you know, a question I have for you all is who are you going to send and what are you most, you know, we, we just found out uh, two days ago, the CEO of Dale Carnegie is our lead kickoff speaker. Um, guys, as a billion dollar company, we're super excited to have him in. He sees huge value in this. Uh, and so we're, we're really excited to be having him in and some other keynotes. 
but what is it about leadership that you see with SPOA in, in this conference that you're willing not just to go, but you're going to bring people, anybody? David, I'm going to start. Um, yeah, super exciting about um, Carnegie Group being involved and um, and also looking, you know, and working on the agenda together. Um, it's a different type of, uh, of conference than maybe what we're always used to, which is, hey, let's talk about software and workflows and, and what's the best cameras and things like that, which is all important. I mean, there's a place, there's a time and a place for that. And, and we all need those types of things. But, um, you know, our, our industry as well needs, um, uh, it's very family oriented, as, as many of us know. And, um, you know, it's a business first as well. Photography is our widget. So making sure, I mean, we're bringing some people that um, are going to get continuing ed with simply running an organization and managing people and how do you motivate people? And my goodness, I think anybody who's watching this right now knows you can't hire like you used to. Um, we've got to think outside the box and think differently. So we're excited to, to bring a team that um, is going to just get a, a focus on leadership and, and organizational training that they maybe haven't before. Um, and, and things from our industry that aren't what they've heard um, about, again, workflows and things like that, which, again, there's a time and a place for that. But this is more about the big picture of, you know, running your company, running it right. I know we're going to talk some cyber intelligence. And my goodness, what an important topic with we're taking photos of minors. And what if there is a breach? And, you know, as, as um, we alluded to as well, Mark talked about, I think, you know, the data security and, and schools giving us that and how do we manage and whatnot. So just some topics that I think our industry hasn't broached a lot before and we can get a lot out of it in a two day period. So I'm excited for our team to be a part of that. I, I wanted to share, you know, I was able to go to the uh, executive and governing board meeting out in Houston uh, just a couple of months ago. Um, and it was so invigorating and it was so revitalizing to actually sit in an actual room with actual people who actually do what I do. Uh, you know, I, as business owners and, and doing the kind of work that we do that requires the kind of laser focus on all kinds of little things. We get very focused on our own businesses and our own problems and our own issues. And I know for myself, and I think maybe others might agree, you forget there's a whole other world. Well, how do they do it in Seattle? And how do they do it in Texas? And and what's going on in Michigan? How does that work? And how is that similar or different than what I do? And then also just being able to have a conversation about some of the, maybe the frustrations that we faced and joys that we faced. Oh, I had this problem with this picture day and I had this issue with this kind of person to see the, the, the flicker of, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I had that same problem you do and here's how we solved it. And it just felt really good to be in the same room with you all. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the June conference um, particularly now where we do spend an awful lot of time in our Zooms uh, to actually be with human beings and have really uh, open conversations about what we do. Uh, it was fun. Uh, I definitely learned a lot. It gave me a lot to think about. Um, and it really just sort of expanded my mind. You know, I've, I've run urban sign photographers for 25 years. I feel like I've seen and done it all. But you talk to some other folks and you haven't seen and done it all. There's always something new to learn. So that's what I'm really excited about uh, with SPOA. I think one of the things I'm most excited with the conference and everybody coming together is that um, you know this this organization was not founded just to be a handful of photography companies, but to be a resource that really brought value and um, collaboration across the nation. And um, I love the partnerships that that we're talking about. Folks like Dale Carnegie, arguably not in the school photo industry, but yet valuable. Um, partners that can really bring, you know, actual change and improvement to organizations by the coaching and the and skilling up the the folks that uh, would be attending. So, super excited that you know what we're doing and all coming together is going to really have a huge impact on you know anyone that wants to kind of join in and be a part of this. Um, and it's not just you know industry specific; it gets into big topics and um, you know big things we shall be talking about. David, I'm, I'm excited that SPO is, a, SPO is a big tent and everybody's invited uh, to play a role in it, regardless of the size of your company. You could work with 10 schools or a thousand schools. Um, I feel like everybody's welcomed, everybody's voice is heard, um, and you, you certainly learn a great deal. So if you're just starting out in this business or if you've been in this business for 30 years, SPOA has a tremendous amount. Um, 
have great things to offer everyone. And much like that. Philip just said, um, with the these outside professionals coming in and training us, the Dale Carnegie, Homeland Security, Secret Service, superintendents, I mean, I don't know where else you would get an impact like that and, you know, um, topics on leadership like that um, anywhere else. So I, I think, uh, like Chip alluded to, you know, there's, there's definitely a time for play and place for all of those other things, like, you know, the production aspect and all of that stuff, but all the leadership qualities that these outside trainers are going to bring, I think is really setting this whole thing apart. For, for me, uh, the reason I'm excited about it is there's the, the treadmill aspect of the business where we're running in place and trying to get a little bit better with cameras and a little bit better with production. But this conference I'm looking forward to, to um, network with other business leaders at, at a more strategic level. Like, where do you think the industry is going? Uh, how is the hiring trending going where you are asking these more broad-based questions that as leaders, I really can't go and hobnob with my uh, frontline photographers and talk to them about that. There's like, step out of the way, pal. I'm just trying to take a picture of this kid, right? So for this, this is where I'm going to be able to get together with peers and discuss the issues that really affect running a business rather than just uh, being inside of it, trying to improve it incrementally. Well, I, I think we're, uh, whether you're a larger business or a smaller business, the advantage is, is you're gonna learn from different levels, different people. And it's, we, it's definitely gonna be focused more on what we do as opposed to being an individual out there searching for answers. I know that uh, in my time that spent with this group, I've learned a lot from a lot of different areas of the country that, hey, this might be headed my way in my state. Um, and I'm sure others learn the same way things from me. So I agree uh, with all, everyone that's, it, it's an advantage to be able to talk to people of all different sizes from all different parts of the country. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that, Tom. I probably had two, they're not on any board, they're, they're members, uh, member companies. They've purely said just the legal uh, um, support we've provided has paid for its membership tenfold, uh, especially with all the student data privacy stuff coming down the pipeline and, and what we're going to be bringing with that with our partnership now with Access for Learning and the U.S. Department of Education. It just gives us a larger seat at the table to be able to stop some of the, you know, uh, Mark, you know, who's going to be our key advocacy uh, is going to have two days this spring that all companies will have letters and resources to, to send out to your, your state senators and, and your, your um, legislatures so that what happened in Illinois never happens in any other state because it's happening. It, it's happening whether we like it or not. And, and even we were told by those boards that put together those laws, yeah, we didn't think about you know, your copyright protection. Um, you know, th they had full intention and we all know that happens in law. They, they're, their whole, we want to keep kids safe. We want to protect them. Uh, but no one ever thought about that. You actually have a federally protected copyright, uh, through the U S uh, uh, copyright in the Supreme court, um, that you don't have to eliminate your images and that data because that's your property to be able to sell for the future. And you got to be able to uh, know who that is. And so we're going to get in front of this so we can make sure that, you know, those barriers of entry don't get harder, they get easier for you. Um, however, we do want some of those barriers of entry from a small company starting, we want to provide you the, the workflow and the security so that everyone continues to raise the bar. We don't want to see something that could break us down, right? And, and so have a negative impact on the whole industry because of one. So um, with that, a, a last question, and I say that, maybe I ask one more, but, um, you know, we're having, you know, you're seeing now we're, we're actually advocating at the state level, at the federal level. Uh, SPO is actually going to be at a couple conferences, um, speaking at, you know, with whether it's school business officers on how to properly do, you know, the newest things for bids and RFPs. Uh, at the state and national level, as well as we'll be in Nashville just in a few weeks at the superintendent's conference. Why do you all think that's powerful and important for everybody that's on this call? Anyone? 
David, I think, as you said earlier, you know, the, the world is changing rapidly. And sometimes in this industry, it feels like, you know, we're, we're not adapting quickly enough. And so I think it's important at that level that we're having those conversations because I think we've all seen RFPs and, and um, things come across our desk that look like it was written 30 or 40 years ago. And it, I think it's important that the people that are in control of setting the standards that are putting out the RFPs that are regulating um, the school photography process really are educated on you know what's available, where the, where, where the world is at today, and how to um, how to adjust and adapt accordingly. So I think it's I think it's vital. Agreed. Educating superintendents uh, or secondary school principals or whatever the national conferences that you'll be attending on our behalf will be a great way to just let people know that there are standards and that anybody. For instance, whether they be the mom and pop studio with 10 schools or whether they're a larger company with a thousand, that if they're abiding by the, uh, if they're part of this organization, they'll understand that um, their um, images will flow into their yearbooks and their, uh, into their software. And so that they can have a little bit of uh, assurance that um, if they're a SPOA member, those superintendents or secondary school principals or whatever other organ, you know, uh, conventions you'd be attending, they'll know that um, everybody here is, is set to that standard and ready to go. You know, do you think, I, I made one note um, today in an email that I sent out about that survey that makes me think, you know, between Philip and Mark, you're talking about bids and RFPs. Um, you know, we as an industry haven't done a fantastic job about providing educators with facts, factual evidence. And so, you know, by just having this, uh, this industry survey, um, all of you are going to be able to uh, really defend why you're offering what you offer at the exact same time that data will be shared to schools and districts, you know, so that they, we all know there's bids that were written 25 years ago that they're, they're telling you they still want 18 exchanges I, and billfolds. I, I don't think you can buy a billfold uh, or a wallet today that has a thing that holds pictures anymore. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's really going to help us evolve and, and change which makes everything more effective across the board. You know, to, to end it, I will ask one last thing, you know, why did when all of you have insanely busy schedules, why did you choose to serve? And, and I just want to end on that, you know, it, it takes um, a servant's attitude to do what all of you all have done. And I can't, you know, thank you all enough. None, a couple of you thank me. It's not me. Y'all made this possible. So, um, you know, why did you choose to serve at a time that you had no time? <laughs> I mean, I'll, staff I'll, was limited and everything. Why did you choose to pick up the torch and run with it? I'll start. Um, I've, I've built a, a life and a family, uh, able to support a family in this industry. And I just thought it was time to give back um, and give back to the industry that gave me so much. And it was just that simple. I'll, I'll piggyback on what Mark's saying. Um, our organization's a second generation company. Um, several years ago, I was not sure that this was an industry that would support a third generation of my family, um, not due to our, our company, due to the industry. Um, I feel very differently about that um, as I sit here today. Um, that whether my boys want to be in this or not, that's up to them. But I think there'll be a place for them. I think it'll be a healthy industry. I think there'll be school photos needing to be taken and wanting to be taken. And we, SPOA, are a advocate to help reiterate that to society, quite frankly. So um, that's what I'm excited about. That's awesome. Anyone else? I think the biggest thing, the reason why I joined is just to, uh, you know, one, like everybody else is saying, that piggyback is to give back to the industry that's that's given me so much to where I am today. And then not only that, but just to, you know, I, I see the, you know, I see a lot of, you know, we've talked about the barriers low now. So a lot of new people are coming in into the street, uh, but just as an opportunity to educate the new generation of photographers uh, and to know there is a right way to deal with, you know, everything as far as data, the images, um, there are things that can go wrong, um, you know, so essentially to, to be part of that network, I've had things go wrong with me, you know, ransomware attacks, drives have failed, 
Um, but now it's, you know, I've, I got a place that I can go and ask questions um, that everyone's, you know, unfortunately, some of the people have experienced the same. Um, so now we all have a place that we can go to for help and advice in the future for, for everything. I'm going to reiterate again what, what everyone else has said. And I think everybody on this particular Zoom has been blessed, uh, worked hard, but still blessed in uh, to coin a phrase we hear often is our responsibility to play it forward and to help those coming along and coming up. And again, to keep keep our focus on who are the true true customers that we serve. And I think that's what this group does. And I think that we are interested in helping again, regardless of your size of your company, uh, to help you also come along just like we all did. Um, so I'm just gonna say, let's play it forward. <clears throat> yeah. Well, hey, I appreciate your time. I, I do want to end with saying, you know, I heard it a couple of times and I, I do want to make sure everyone hears that that watches this. Everyone is invited to SPOA. Uh, I don't care if you're the largest yearbook company in the country, you're the largest school picture company in the country. If you are just starting a yearbook company, if you are just starting a school picture company, we would love to have you a part of us. Um, there is There are plenty of places to get plug in and, and help. Uh, whether it's in committees uh, or just becoming a member and, and using our resources. Uh, but man, we would love all of you to join and, and really just tackle this mission. And, and that is really the, the big key is to make sure that for generations, some of these companies have done a remarkable job for generations working on a fifth, but some of you are, are first generation. And how do you get to that next generation? And I, I've seen nothing but the, these board members and all those that are not here collaborate, offer willingly to support one another, even when they're a competitor. And, and I could not, there are times I pinch myself going, is this really happening? So I just wanna thank you uh, for your leadership and what you've done and uh, just wish all of you an incredible spring. Uh, and, and we are looking forward to uh, having all school picture companies join SPO and the mission in the future. And, and again, thank you and have a wonderful spring. Thank you.